Hi. In this video, I'm starting logarithmic functions. So I'm going to do this section in two videos. So that's the first part. And uh, remember that uh, last time, in the last video, we covered exponential functions. So that's, that was covered in the previous section. An exponential function is a function of the form f of x equal a raised to the x power, where x, where a, the base a does not equal one. Otherwise, the function is going to be a constant and a is positive. To make sure that we don't have any complex numbers, like the, like the square root of negative one, we know that is not a real number. So we want to make sure that a is positive. So one of the things mentioned was that an exponential function Okay, I'm trying to type this. Uh, an exponential function is one to one and has an inverse. And that inverse has a name. The inverse is called the logarithmic function with base with base a. So I type this twice with base a. With the same conditions on a that a is positive and it does not equal one. Okay, so I'm going to copy the definition. Um. So this is what we know. Uh, this is what we have. For the uh, for the exponential function, um, so if y is equal to a to the x, so y is equal to a to the x if and only if um, the logarithm with base a of x is equal to uh, with the logarithm with base with base a of y is equal to x. So that's how we define a logarithm with base, um, a logarithm with base uh, a. So here's the formal definition in the book. On page 435, for all real numbers y, in all positive numbers, a and x, where a is not equal to one, y equal to logarithm with base a of x is equivalent to x equal to a raised to the y power. So the expression log with base a of x represents the exponent to which the base a must be raised in order to obtain x. So this expression, um, logarithm with base a of x, this reads, well, what I just said. I'm going to type what I just said. This is the logarithm with base a of x. Okay, so some examples. We have the logarithmic expression and the equivalent exponential expression or exponential equation. Um, logarithm with base two of a uh, of eight. Okay, so in order to evaluate logarithm with base two of eight. We're looking for the number that raised, um, or yeah, we're looking for a number two. So that two raised to that number is equal to eight. In this case, logarithm with, with base two of eight is three because two raised to the third power is equal to eight. 
uh, logarithm with base two of four. So we are looking for the number such that four raised to that power is equal to two. In this case, four raised to the one half is equal to two. So logarithm with base two of four is one half. Actually, I, I didn't do this correctly. This should have been four and two. <clears throat> this was four, uh, the base is four. And the input is two. You know, this is the same as the square root of four equals two. And logarithm with base three of one ninth. So the base is going to be three. And we're looking for the power. So three raised to that power is one ninth. Okay, so that power is going to be negative two. Because three raised to the negative two is one over three squared, which happens to be one ninth. Okay, so we are going to solve logarithmic equations by rewriting in exponential form. The first equation is logarithm with base x of 125 over 8 equals 3. OK, so let's write in exponential form. The base of the logarithm is the base of the exponential. So logarithm with base x of 125 over eight equal to three, this is equivalent to x raised to the third power equal 125 over eight. So x is going to be the cube root of 125 over eight. And that is properties of radicals. This is, one, this is the cube root of 125 over the cube root of eight. Uh, five times five times five is one hundred twenty-five, and eight times and two times two times two is eight. So that's going to be the solution. The solution set is five halves. B. We're going to again solve the equation by writing in exponential form. The equation is logarithm with base nine of x equals three halves. So the equation in exponential form, the base of the logarithm is the base of the exponential. So the, log the base of the logarithm is nine and nine raised to the three halves is equal to x. But nine to the three halves is the same as the square root of nine raised to the third power. The square root of nine is three and three times three times three is 27. So the solution set of that equation is 27. <clears throat> And see, so in the first, um, <clears throat> in example A, we wanted to find the base. In example B, we wanted to find the input of the logarithm. In example C, we're going to find the, the output. Solve the equation logarithm with base 36 
of the square root of six equal to x. In exponential form, the base is 36. And we're looking for the number such that 36 raised to that number is the square root of six. So we did these equations in the last section by using the one-to-one -one property, uh, the square root of six is six to the one half. And that 36, we can write it in terms of six. 36 is six squared. Properties of exponents, six to the two x is equal to six to the one half. So I'm going to continue on this side. One-to-one uh, -one property. From the one-to-one -one property, I know that two x is one half and solving for x, x is one fourth. So the solution set is one fourth. I'm going to write this below. The solution set is one fourth. Okay, so now we'll see what happens um, if we think of logarithm with base a of x as a function. Okay, so the definition is on page 437. By definition, the logarithm is the inverse of the exponent. So if a is positive, a does not equal one and x is positive, then the logarithmic function with base a is um, f of x equal to logarithm with base a of x. We're going to see what the graph looks like. Okay, so in the same set of coordinate axes, we are going to graph the following functions. F of x equal to two to the x and g of x equal to logarithm with base two of x. So I'm going to make tables and uh, plot the points. Okay, so we're going to make two separate tables with two to the x, Okay, so I'm going to use the values negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. The y values, uh, we did this before, the y values are one fourth, one half, one, two, and four. If y is the logarithm with base two of x. Okay, so that's the final the, as the inverse. So, the y values of two to the x are going to be the x values of logarithm with base two of x. So we're going to exchange, we're going to switch the x and y values. Logarithm with base two of one fourth is negative two. Logarithm with base two of one half is negative one. Logarithm with base two of one is zero. Logarithm with base two of two is one and logarithm with base two of four is two. So let's plot the points. So we have this up to four. Okay, 
we're going to plot points. Uh, we're first going to plot the, the points of the exponential function. Those are negative two, one half, negative two, one, four. Negative one, one half, zero, one, one, two, and two, four. The next one would be three, eight, then four, 16, and so on. And the logarithm with base two of x, the graph of y equals the logarithm with base two of x. So that goes through the points um, 1, 0, 2, 1, 4, 2, uh, negative 1, 1 half, or 1 half negative 1, and 1, 4, negative 2. Okay, so a couple of observations. Um, is that the graph of two to the x never touches the x-axis. So I'm going to write with the same color, never touches the x-axis. And the graph <clears throat> of the logarithm with base two of x never touches the y-axis. Um, so the graph of the logarithm, well, it keeps increasing. It keeps rising to the uh, to the right at a very slow at a very slow rate. But as the x values approach zero from the right, the y values will uh, uh, will grow. Or, or will keep increasing in the in the negative direction. So this one never crosses the x-axis on the, the y-axis. Another way to say this is that the y-axis is a vertical axis. <clears throat> so the other observation is that if the base of the logarithm, well, the base is always going to be a positive number, not equal to one. If the base is positive and not equal to one, then the logarithm with base A of X is undefined. if x is less than or equal to zero. So if you wanted to solve, let's say you wanted to, um, you wanted to solve this equation, logarithm with base two of uh, zero equal, uh, let's call this y. So if you write this in exponential form, you, you are looking for the number such that two to the y is equal to zero, so this has no solution. There is no number that raised to the to, to some power, or uh, there is no there is no number such that two raised to that number is equal to zero. Or you want to evaluate uh, the logarithm of a negative number, or I can do another something else. That one also has no solution. We're looking for the number such that three raised to the y power is negative one, but that number doesn't exist. There is no number y such that y, such that three raised to y is negative one. So that one has no solution. And we're going to do the next example, the next pair of graphs. We are going to uh, graph
f of x equal to one half to the x and g of x equal logarithm with base one half of x <clears throat> on the same set of coordinate axes. Okay, we're going to make tables like we did in the last example. So we have x and one half to the x. Our x values are negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Uh, one half to the negative two is four. One half to the negative one is uh, two. One half raised to the zero power is one. One half to the first power is itself and one half raised to the second power is one fourth. When we do this for the logarithm, we are going to switch the x and the y values, but we're going to write the, uh, the, the x values in increasing order. So that's one fourth, one half, one, two, and four. And the x values are going to be uh, or the y values are going to be the x values of one half to the x. So one fourth or logarithm with base one half of one fourth is two. Uh, logarithm with base one half of one half is, let's see, uh, so that one, yeah, that, that one is one. Logarithm with base one half of one is zero. Logarithm with base one half of two is negative one and logarithm with base one half of four is negative two. So let's plot the points. We have X values and Y values. Okay, negative values are negative one, negative two. And we're going to plot the points. Okay, so we have the points negative two, four. Negative two, four, negative one, two, zero, one, one, one half, two, one, four. So that is going to be the graph of one half to the x. And the graph of the logarithm with base two or with base one half of x that passed through the point. Uh, so let's start with uh, one zero, two negative one, four negative two. And then we have one, uh, one half one, and one, four, two. So that one is the graph of the logarithm with base one half of x. So again, the graph of the exponential never touches the x-axis and the graph of the logarithm never touches the y-axis. So here's a list of characteristics of logarithmic functions. So I'm going to copy the properties. Okay, given a logarithmic function, logarithm with base a of x, uh, always the point one over a negative one, one zero and a one are going to be on the graph. If a is positive or if a is greater than one, 
then f is an increasing function. And if a is positive less than one, then f is a decreasing function. The y-axis is a vertical asymptote. And the domain of an exponential function is the set of positive numbers. And the range is the set of all real numbers. Okay, and uh, last examples, we're going to do some transformations of uh, exponential functions using these properties. Not exponential logarithmic functions using these properties. Okay, so we are going to identify the transformations. and give the domain and range of the functions. The first function is f of x equal to logarithm with base 3 of x minus 2. OK, so we have one transformation. Um, the graph of, yeah, I'll have to uh, type this. I'll have to write it. The graph of logarithm with base 3 of x, or y equal logarithm with base 3 of x, is shifted <clears throat> to units to the right. We have a minus two, so that's two units to the right. That is going to change the vertical asymptote. And to determine the domain, so transformations are not going to change the range. If the range is a set of real numbers, that's not going to change, but the domain for the domain, we need to solve the inequality x minus 2 greater than 0. So, uh, well, it cannot be equal to either, so it's just x minus 2 greater than 0. So x greater than 2, and the domain is 2 to infinity, excluding 2, obviously. The range is still going to be already close. So I shift is not going to change the range. just the domain. OK, so we're going to uh, sketch the graph to compare. So one thing I know for sure is that if the base of the exponential, or if the base of the, of the logarithm is a, the graph is going to pass through the point 1 over a negative 1, 1, 0, and a1. OK, so let's, let's um, uh, draw the graph. So I'm going to start with, in this case, the basic function is logarithm with base 3 of x. So this passes through the points. 1 turn negative 1, uh, 1, 0, and 3, comma 1. The new function does logarithm with base 3 of x minus 2. So there is no vertical shift. There is a horizontal shift. So if it's shifted to units to the right, we are going to add 2 to each x value. 1 third plus 2 is uh, 7 thirds. 1 plus 2 is. Uh, 3, and 3 plus 2 is 5. The y values are the same. There was no vertical shift. So I still have negative 1, 0, and 1. OK, so let's finally draw the graph.
Okay, so if the graph of the logarithm with base three shifts two units to the right, the horizontal the horizontal asymptote or the vertical asymptote is going to shift as well. And we have three points. We have the point seven thirds, negative one. So seven thirds, it's um, somewhere between um, between two and three. Next, we have three zero and uh, five one. And that's it. Barbie. We'll see what happens with the graph of uh, f of x. equal to the logarithm with base two of x. Plus two. Okay, so there is going to be a vertical shift. The graph of uh, the logarithm with base two of x is shifted to unit software. So this one um, will shift. Two units up. So the domain does not going to change the domain. I still want x to be positive or um, the domain must be written in interval notation, so that's going to be zero to infinity. And a shift is not going to change the range. And we're going to compare the graphs of logarithm with base two of x and logarithm with base two of x plus two. <clears throat> so let's draw them. We have x and we have one. We have uh, one half negative one, um, one zero and two one. And the logarithm with base two of x plus two there is no horizontal shift, so the x values don't change. The y values um, are going to add two to each y value. So that's negative one plus two, uh, zero plus two. And two plus two. That, that was actually, uh, yeah, zero plus two and one plus two. Okay, so let's see what the graph of the logarithm with base two of x plus two look like. Okay, so we have one half. Okay, so yeah, there is not the the vertical asymptote, the vertical asymptote is not going to shift. But we have the y values and the x values. So that's a y. Okay, so the points we got were uh, one half, uh, one half one. We got one, two, and two, three. So this is the graph of y equals to 2dx shifted 
two units of work. The y axis is going to be the vertical asymptote. And the last one is going to be a logarithm with base four. That's part C. This is logarithm with base four of x plus one minus one. And the graph of logarithm with base four of x is going to be shift, is going to have a couple of shifts. Uh, one horizontal shift and one vertical shift. So that one is shifted. Um, one unit to the left. and one unit down. So we're going to make the tables with three points. First, the logarithm with base four of x, which we know they pass through the point one, four, negative one. Um, then uh, one, zero for one. The new function it is going to shift one unit to the left and one unit down. We are going to subtract one from each x value. So one four minus one is negative three fourths. Uh, one minus one is zero. And four minus one is three. And we're going to subtract one from each y value. Okay, so let's plot. Oh, and also the domain. Yeah, I wrote the domain and range. Yeah, I didn't write the domain and range. So let's do that. So the domain so I do have the points. I know what the points are going to be. The range is always all real numbers. The domain for the domain, I'm going to solve x plus one greater than one, no, greater than zero, or x greater than negative one. Okay, so that is the domain is negative one to infinity. The range is still the set of our real numbers. And let's uh, plot the, let's uh, draw the graph using the points we got. Okay, our x values are negative three fourths, zero and three. Okay, so that's negative three over four. And the y values are negative two, negative one and zero. Okay, if the graph shifted one unit to the left, the vertical asymptote is going to be the line x equals negative one. So this is going to be the vertical asymptote. And finally, plot the points. Those were negative three fourths, negative one. Um, we got negative three fourths, negative one. We got zero, negative one. Oh, so, so negative three fourths, negative two, zero, negative one. We got that. Um, uh, 
Okay, so I'm waiting for this to respond. Yeah, apparently this uh, this froze. Okay, there it is. So that's negative three, four, negative one. Uh, negative, um, we got zero, negative one, and we got three, zero. So that's the graph. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. Uh, next time we are going to study the properties of logarithms and how to use them to expand or condense expressions. Thank you for listening.